the Old Time Gospel Hour, Program 552, Regular Version. From the auditorium of the Thomas Road Baptist Church in Lynchburg, Virginia, the Faith Partners and Friends present Jerry Falwell and the Old Time Gospel Hour, celebrating over 25 years of Christian ministry. seldom interrupt our co-pastor Jim Moon when he's leading a congregational song, but I think I can do it today because I want you to sing that last stanza, but before we do, and I want you to sing it, I mean really as unto the Lord and at home, I hope you'll join with us if you know it. I just want to, uh, I just want to say that Tuesday, two days from today, Maisel and I will have been married 25 years. I'm sure to her it seems 50. Um, it does not seem 25 years to me. Now, my wife looks much younger than I. She is not. I have more mileage on me than she does. But Bruce, uh, our producer, director of Old Time Gospel Hour, Bruce Braun, would tell you that the only thing predictable about the Old Time Gospel Hour is that it's so unpredictable. And uh, he is the only director in the world who has a pastor who tries to help him direct. Of course, he tries to help me preach, so it works out fine. <laughs> but I, Bruce, I want you to put a camera on that pretty girl who's been playing the piano of this church for 27 years, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night. She's been my wife for 25 years come Tuesday. And I want all of you to give her a hand for endurance <laughs> and faithfulness. And I can honestly say for you young couples looking in that we love each other more today than we did 25 years ago, if that is possible. She's been the pianist for all of these 27 years the church has been here. Two years she played the piano before we were married. And I stood some danger of losing my church pianist, so I married her quickly. <laughs> also in love with her, of course, and led by God together. God's blessed us with three wonderful children. They're all about grown now. And we're very close to being back where we started. Any of you know what I'm talking about? You know, just us. But anyhow, it's a little while yet before that happens. But I, I, want, uh, I just wanted to say, honey, we, I love you and I thank God for you. And 25 years from now, I'll help you to the piano <laughs> and, and come right back here and say the same thing more emphatically. Now, Jim, let's, let's sing the last song. Stand up. So he's coming back to and you may be seated. Thank you, Jim Moon. And during that chorus, you not only saw my wife playing the piano, but Mrs. Ed Heinsohn playing the organ, and we appreciate our musicians so very, very much. We are today doing something we did last week, and today is the last time we are doing it. We're saying to friends everywhere who heard me preach 31 sermons last year, on the 31 chapters of the book of Proverbs, that if you would like to have those 31 sermons and they're on cassette tapes, 
I preached them over a period of 31 weeks from the 31 chapters of the Proverbs. If you'd like to have these cassettes of those 31 sermons on these tapes and that book that just fell out, it wasn't supposed to be in there, uh, this, this will be mailed to you if you will just pick up your telephone and call us on the toll-free number. Now, we last week said you had to write. Well, uh, we, many of you have written, but we want you to call now because we only produce 31,000 copies, 31,000 sets. And once we are out, we are out. So if you will just take that toll-free number down, I'll tell you just a little bit later how you can get that set, those cassettes on the Proverbs. But before you call me, now write the number down, and I'll tell you in a few moments what you've got to say uh, to our operators in order to get that set. We want to send it to you, but you need to write that toll-free number down and call today. Today's the last day you can call for it, and when we're out, we're out, and we suspect we'll run out before the day is over. Right now, the Old Time Gospel Hour Choir, led by Mr. David Randall.
we are expecting, come August, our record enrollment ever in Liberty Baptist College and Schools. We have over 5,300 students this year in the four schools from 50 states and 29 foreign countries. And I would say to any young men, young ladies anticipating attending Liberty this fall, a distinctively Christian school, liberal arts, fully accredited, 42 majors, adding pre-law, computer science, and home ec this fall. If you are interested, you should call the toll-free number and simply say when the operator answers, send me a Liberty Baptist College catalog and all the application forms. And if you need financial aid, scholarship help, or a job, or whatever, ask for the financial aid package also. We'll ship it to you immediately. If you happen to be the son or daughter of a full-time pastor, associate pastor, missionary, evangelist, or if you're, one of your parents is a full-time Christian school teacher, Christian day school teacher, or administrator, or principal, you also can all come free, tuition free the first year. It's called the President Scholarship. And if you happen to be graduating as the valedictorian or the salutatorian, number one or number two academically from any high school, you likewise can come to Liberty on the Chancellor's Scholarship. Ask about all of that. Call 1-800-446-5000. Uh, or you can write us, if you live in Hawaii, Alaska, or Canada, write us Jerry Falwell, Lynchburg, Virginia, or Box 505, Richmond Hill, Ontario. Get the information and become a student this fall in the fastest growing such Christian school system in the world, as far as we know. We recently honored here at Thomas Road a local group called the Lynchburg Life Saving Crew that's about 50 years old now, nearly. And uh, we had them sit as a group in our service and we recognized them and honored them. All right, thank you. I'm going to ask Mr. Herman Worley and Mr. Mike Dickin, Mr. Kimball Glass to come to the platform, please. First of all, Herman Worley, I want you to come up and give us a little history lesson. This is Herman Worley, who's been a member now for 43 years. Now, Herman, what cause, what brought about the formation of the Life Saving Crew? Back fall well, in 1933, we had a terrific fire at the corner of 12th and Church Street, which was known as the Transit Bureau. There were 22 lives lost, and 90 some had to go to the hospital. There were no ambulances, there were no rescue squads, there were not anything but just plain old people walking up and down the street at 2.30 in the morning. So a bunch of fellows got together, decided they wanted to start something to help those who were fighting fire, the firemen, or anyone else, not so much as to rescue bodies and patients at that time, but to help those who were in need that were protecting us in our state, in our city. Now, Herman, I want to thank you. I want to bring another gentleman up behind you. He's older than you, you, t you tell me, and uh, Kimball. All right, okay. All right. Now, all of you have heard me talk about stopping by Kimball's for a cup of coffee. And back before I got on my diet, you heard me talk about stopping by for a lot of other things. Last Friday morning, Kimball, you've been on, you've been on the crew how long? 31 years. 31 years. And uh, Kimball happens to be a cousin of mine. He doesn't tell it too often, but I'm gonna tell the world right now. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, Thursday morning, I went by there before I started my day's chores, and I had a funeral service a little later that day, got a cup of coffee. And he walked over to the counter. He usually lets the girls take care of, of me, but uh, he walked over and uh, he poured the coffee himself. He brought me some sweet and low, and he brought me a spoon. <laughs> and he came around the counter and sat down beside and chatted with me and so forth. I said, I wonder what in the world is he up to? <laughs> and then he pulled out of, uh, from under the counter a brown envelope. And uh, then he reached inside the envelope and he took out some pictures, Hearst hydraulic tools. He said, you know, Jerry, this tool right here will actually cut through the top of an automobile and release a person who's pinned in it. will take the front of the, it'll cut the automobile, all kinds of pieces, the wall panels. It will just do anything. 
I said, that's great. How, how do you know about it? He said, well, we're trying to buy one for the uh, Lynchburg Life Saving Crew <laughs> uh, to help save lives and uh, so forth. And he went on talking. And uh, I said, well, uh, when are you going to buy it? He said, well, we don't, just don't have the money. And we, we, I said, what does it cost? He said, $11,000. He said, we just, just wish you'd pray about it and so forth. <laughs> And said, uh, he said, you know, we're going to be over there at church with you Sunday, our whole group. <laughs> Anyhow, I drank that $11,000 cup of coffee. <laughs> and we're going to give you one from our church. And congratulations to you, Kimber. All right. Now, <laughs> now this is the, the head man. This is Captain Mike Dickin. And Mike, I'll give you the material back so you know what to buy, and we'll get you a check for it this week for $11,000. And from Thomas Road Church, we think you're well-deserving. God bless you. Give us a word, would you? Thank you, Dr. Falwell. Well, this, uh, this gift, uh, certainly an extreme uh, pleasure to receive. And on behalf of all the current and past members of the organization, it's this kind of a a gift and opportunity given to us that makes it uh, all the more worthwhile for us to spend our time serving you and the other citizens of the city. And I thank you. Thank you, Captain Dickin. God bless. Thank you. That is our way of saying congratulations and our appreciation to the volunteer efforts across the nation. The Sounds of Liberty, students from Liberty Baptist College. Sing for us. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty, is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love, he will joy over thee with singing. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty, is mighty, is mighty. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Oh, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let God, let God arise. Jesus, we had the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Redeemer, living word, blessed Redeemer. 
That book that fell out of this package a moment ago is entitled, How to Live Successfully, and it's the outline of the 31 chapters, the topic of each chapter. For example, chapter 1, my message is entitled, What is Success? Chapter 2 of Proverbs, Learning to Live Successfully. Proverbs chapter 3, Living the Life that Counts. Proverbs chapter 31, the last chapter, I entitled Lessons from My Mother's Knee, 31 chapters, 31 sermons. And I happened last January to observe my 31st anniversary as a Christian, 31 years as a child of God. I was born again January 20, 1952. This little book does come inside this package, How to Live Successfully, that has in it those tapes that carry the 31 uh, sermons on Proverbs, and that will help you to find the location of the chapter that you want the study from. And by the way, I have read aloud every chapter verbatim, verse by verse, and then expounded it, explained it, all 31 chapters on these cassettes. And if you'd like to have it, you need to call the toll-free number and ask simply for Proverbs, 1-800-446-5000. We'll ask you to pledge a gift of $50 or more to this ministry, our television radio ministry. And you may give it half this month and half next month, however you wish to do it. But if you'll call, we'll ship it to you today. And by UPS, you'll have it the next three to five days at your door. But if you happen to be number 31,001 calling, that is, we've only produced 31,000 sets, we'll just have to refuse the pledge because we're just going to produce and ship out 31,000 of the sets. And I hope that you will realize that your $50 gift helps us preach the gospel of Christ to multitudes. If you can give more, do that. It's a tax-deductible gift to the Old Time Gospel Hour. If you can give more, do it, because there are some people who are going to call us who don't have anything to give or have little to give. And you know us well, well enough to know we've never turned anybody down because of finances. And we will send them out. So we're simply saying those who can help us and compensate for those who cannot give, please do that. Just ask for Proverbs, and we'll send it to you. Right now, Don Norman is going to sing about this very place, the presence of God. You know, this wonderful Savior we, we serve, I'm speaking on that subject today. He's right here, this very moment, in this very place, to meet your individual and very need. Don Norman. In this very room, there's quite enough love for one like you. And in this very room, there's quite enough joy for one like me. And there's quite enough hope and quite enough power to take away any gloom for Jesus, Lord Jesus. Why? 
had enough love for all of us. Yes, in this very room, there's quite enough joy for all of us. And there's quite enough hope and quite enough power to take First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 14. I'm speaking today on the subject, Living on Revelations. This is page 1679 in the Faith Partner Study Bible. Paul is speaking, But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And then in Daniel, the Old Testament prophetic book of Daniel, chapter 2 and verse 28, Daniel was called before King Nebuchadnezzar to interpret a dream and then give its interpretation, its meaning. And Daniel made a statement which is the basis for our message today on living on revelations. Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, There is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets. Young Daniel, the young prophet, expressed the nature of God when he said in Daniel 2.28, There is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you today for blessing our family, for what you have done for Maisel and me these 25 years. I am grateful. For our three children, we are thankful and for allowing us to pastor and lead this great congregation, we are very grateful. And then our Father, for the privilege of ministering the gospel to millions through television and radio, again, we're not worthy, but we are grateful. Bless your word today and help people to understand the supernatural nature of the Christian life. In Jesus' name, amen. First of all, I want to say quickly so no one will misunderstand or suspect that I'm heretical. I believe that the Bible, as we have it today, 66 books, Genesis through Revelation, 39 chapters in the Old Testament, uh, books in the Old Testament, 29 or 27 books on the New Testament, 40 writers, thousands of verses and scores of thousands of words, this book as we have it in present uh, containment, this canon of scriptures is all the word of God there is. I do not believe there has been any further revelation, inspired revelation, 
any addition to the Word of God beyond these 66 books as we have them in this King James Version. And I want to say to you that I reject as spurious visions, dreams, revelations that have become the foundation for new religions, religious cults, etc., down through 2,000 years since this book was handed to us in its completed canon. Now, with that said, you know that I believe in the inerrancy of Scripture. There's no point in looking in caves for another book or another chapter. It's all here. Nothing has been left out that should be here, nor was anything added that should not be here. This is the complete and absolutely inerrant Word of God and the only Word of God in this inspired form that there is, period. Now, secondly, so that you'll know that I am not a little bit weird, most of the cases of dreams, visions, revelations, appearances of the Lord in the night, in the bedroom, or in the clouds, etc., etc., I chalk up to too much pizza before bedtime. Now, I said most of that. I do not want to say all-inclusive because there might well be, with a sovereign God, a reason down through the ages for him to speak in an audible voice, though I've never met anyone whom I believe to have heard the audible voice of God. There could be some reason that God might, through some Christophany, some appearance, reveal himself, though I've never met anyone or read of anyone that I felt had such an authentic experience. I certainly have had none of that. The only revelation I get of God in unquestionable form is this written word of God. As I open its pages, God literally talks to me as he does to you, for this is his love letter, his word to man. Now, with all that said, I think I can launch into the message living on revelations without being suspect. Living on revelations. First of all, I believe the whole of the Christian life is a supernatural thing. One becomes a Christian by a revelation. We may call it the new birth. We may call it regeneration. You may call it getting religion. You may call it being saved, S-A-V-E-D. Uh, whatever you want to call it, when a person is born again, becomes a recipient of new birth, spiritual birth, it is as a result of, uh, of revelation or nothing supernatural and eternal happened. Now, I'll come to a verse in a moment on that, but there are many verses. Salvation is of the Lord. You can quote the Westminster Confession by memory, the Articles of Faith of the Baptist Church by memory. You can know the 66 books of the Bible by name, quote thousands of verses uh, from your mind by memory, and still die and go to hell. It isn't what you know in your intellect, but what you have received by revelation in your heart of hearts, your human spirit that saves, that regenerates, that makes new in Christ. Now notice in Galatians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul was telling about his Damascus Road experience when he was converted. He tells about that time when on the road to Damascus, he met the Lord, that bright light came down from heaven, that voice was heard. Others could not discern what was going on, but Paul knew what was happening. And in Galatians 1, verses 15 and 16, uh, pages seven, uh, page 1714 in the Faith Partner Bible, uh, Paul said, But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace, here it is, to reveal His Son in me. When I got converted, very clearly, when I was born again, January 20, 1952. All the facts of the gospel of my lost condition and the holiness of God that I had heard from Charles E. Fuller on the radio, that I had heard from that pastor that night as he preached, that I had heard from others and all those places, all of those compiled facts that were in my mind, suddenly by the Spirit of God were brought from my mind to my heart. God flipped the switch, the light turned on. It wasn't a great emotional thing for me, but it was a revelation. I saw my lostness. I saw his holiness. And that moment, though I'd had opportunities before to do it, that moment I said, yes, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I didn't own a Bible. I didn't know a verse of scripture by memory. I did not know what eschatology was or sanctification or foreordination. Uh, or ecclesiology. I didn't know any of those words. I didn't know any verses. I didn't know any Bible. 
if you had wanted to debate with me that night as a second year college student, uh, 18 years of age, some of the theological facts of the Bible, I would have lost all those debates. The only thing I knew was I'd walked in that church lost on my road to hell. I had heard the gospel, his death, burial, and resurrection in my behalf. With my heart of hearts, I had believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and God saved me. That was revelation. He revealed his son in me. That's why a little child, five years old, can be saved. Because he doesn't have to have a, a doctorate or schooling or a great religious background. He only needs to know he's lost. He needs a savior. He's a sinner. He's broken God's laws. And he needs to know that Christ died for him as an individual, was buried for him, rose from the dead for him. But the Spirit of God, Titus 3, 5, must turn on the light. And then that washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost occurs and you're born again by revelation. Secondly, Bible reading and understanding. When I became a Christian 31 years ago, somebody very graciously told me about a verse in 1 John chapter 2. You know, I, would, I began, I purchased my first Bible the next day. My pastor recommended that I purchase a King James Version, a Schofield reference edition of the Bible. If he had recommended a Sears Roebuck catalog, I would have gone out and bought one. That's why it's so important for pastors to instruct new converts carefully because new converts are so impressionable and so gung-ho to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, they need discipleship from somebody who knows what he believes. And my pastor recommended a Bible. I began, I purchased one at J.P. Bell Company uh, the next morning and began reading it like it was going out of style, memorized Romans 6 that first week, didn't understand a lot of what I was reading, and I was having a problem with uh, digesting these deep spiritual truths, these deep things of God that I read to you from 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9 through 14 a few moments ago. Paul said that eyes have not seen nor ears heard, that's 1 Corinthians 2, 9, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Now people, how many times have you heard that read at a funeral service? As though when you go to heaven, you're going to see all the wonderful things and hear the wonderful things God's prepared for them that loved him. That's not what the verse means. Verse 10, the next verse says, but his spirit hath revealed them unto us. Past tense. Right now. It's past tense. We have it right now. That means the deep things of God that uh, Paul talks about there are, are knowable, receivable. And verse 14 of that second chapter of 1 Corinthians says, the natural man, the unregenerate man, receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, they must be shown to him, revealed to him by the Spirit. And this old Christian friend, long since in heaven, referred me to 1 John 2, 27. He said, now, Jerry, you don't have to be with a pastor or a Bible teacher all the time to know your Bible. 1 John 2, 27. But the anointing, that's the Holy Spirit who indwells every believer. The anointing which ye have received of him, of God, abideth where? In you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing, as the Holy Spirit teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it or he hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. I learned something 31 years ago that I practiced every time I've opened the Bible. Every time I open the Bible, I softly and quietly say, Lord, teach it to me. You wrote it. Who else is better qualified to tell me what it means? I sometimes wish the framers of the First Amendment could be resurrected for one hour to straighten out the Supreme Court. They know a great deal more about what the, first, the framers of the First Amendment meant than they, the framers, meant and knew they meant. And the Spirit of God wrote this book, this Bible, this wonderful Word of God, and then He's our teacher to reveal it to us. Don't ever open the Bible without asking God for revelation. You'll read one passage of Scripture that you've read a dozen times and you've seen nothing there, and suddenly one day because you're seeking God and you're, you're in anguish or in need and, and you need a touch from heaven, in that same passage, a truth leaps off the pages into your heart. Why didn't I see that before? Because it's only accepted, received by revelation. Bible reading. Trust the Lord to reveal the Word to you. As every day you look into the Word, ask God to open it to you. What about prayer? Prayer. Did you know prayer is not something in the book that you carry in your pocket and read occasionally? We don't have any prayer books in this church. Now, I'm not against prayer books, as long as you just think it's something nice to read and look over. Prayer is from the heart. 
Prayer is something the Spirit of the Lord motivates and reveals. Did you ever pray and then finally in frustration stop and say, I don't know how to pray about that? Have you ever had an experience in your life where you didn't know how to ask God about something that was very important to you? Didn't know how to pray about it. We all have, almost every day. Well, thank God that is not unique to you or me. Every Christian has that problem. And prayer is also a revelatory matter. Romans 8, verses 26 and 27, Paul said, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Let's put that in simple words. Though you have no theological training and you pray sometimes prayers that are theologically wrong, the Spirit of God who loves you and who knows what you're really trying to say takes those words and translates them into a heavenly language which you cannot utter and delivers them to the Father theologically immaculate. Your sincerity, your love for Christ, your prayer in and through the name of Jesus, the Spirit of God's your lawyer. He keeps you from getting in trouble in court. He doesn't take your dumb words to the judge. He lets you tell him what you're trying to say. And then he says, I'll say it for you. With groanings which cannot be uttered, the Spirit of the Lord takes our prayers, our anguish, our tears, our heartache, that hour and a half we spent with God and we felt we never really said it the way we wanted to. Forget it. Jesus knew what you meant to say and what you ought to have said. And the words that you uttered that sounded so terrible and Grammar was awful. Con sentence construction was woeful. Everything was bad. Theology questionable. God knows your heart. He knows if you're rightly related to him. And the Spirit of the Lord takes those words in and through the Lord Jesus, who's your lawyer, who presents them to the Father, totally acceptable, according to the will of God. That's the word in verse 27. Now, what about witnessing? Did you ever witness to somebody? And he explained the plan of salvation so simply. And you got through, you'd made it like A, B, C, and then he said, I can't see it. And you've walked away saying, why can't he see that? Did you ever bring somebody out to hear a preacher of the gospel, such as J. Harold Smith, and that lost person heard God's three deadlines, wasn't convicted, didn't walk the aisle, and you left saying, how could he have sat through a sermon like that? You forget salvation is of the Lord. It's not of the pulpit, it's not of the church, it's not of the baptistry, it's not of logic, it is not of eloquence, it's not of music, it's of the Lord. Now while I believe in the sovereignty of God in salvation, I also believe in human responsibility. We keep on delivering that message, but I've had the privilege of leading people to Christ the first time I gave them the gospel, and I've had others whom, to whom I presented the gospel hundreds of times from the pulpit and in person, and then one day, suddenly, they said, yes, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And I said, well, what did I say then that I didn't say the other hundred times? Oh, it wasn't that. You've said it right all the time. But the Spirit of God just flipped the switch on this time. I wasn't ready then. And what they mean when they say I wasn't ready was the Spirit of God had not performed that revelation, had not revealed Christ and His gospel and their lostness to them. It is our business not to save everybody, but to present the plan of salvation to everyone. We must evangelize the world. It's God who gives the increase. Then what about guidance? Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. How do you know guidance? You know, Paul, when he was telling in Galatians 2, 1 and 2 about his trip to Jerusalem where he appeared to the disciples there. He'd just been converted, a new convert. He said, I went up by revelation. What did he mean? God told him to go up there. God led him up there. I really believe that the Spirit of the Lord can lead us one moment at a time, one step at a time. We have living in us the Spirit of the living Christ, the glorified Christ. And if we get up every morning dependent on His Word, dependent on prayer, dependent on His protection, His Lordship, if our hearts are in fellowship with Him, I think we have the promise he will not allow us to make any serious errors. He will say at the right moment, this is the way, walk ye in it. This is the way, walk ye in it. And 
Christians who are walking in the Spirit of God know what his guidance and his leadership is all about. New job, new uh, purchase, a new acquisition, uh, young people who are looking at marriage. I believe the Lord can come into every phase of your life and make sure that you do the right thing at the right time. That's not infallibility, but that is the mark of the Christian. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. Then what about, what about getting to know Christ intimately? What about getting to know Him as, a, as an intimate person? Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17. Ephesians 1, verses 15 through 17. The Apostle Paul said, and this was really a prayer of his, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in what? In the knowledge of him. You can get to know Jesus a little better every day by revelation. As you read the Word, as you live the Christian life, as your prayers get answered, as you get to know God more intimately, the Spirit of the Lord will reveal Jesus to you. Then what about the church? Did you know the church is a mystery? God didn't give the mystery of the church to Simon Peter or James or any of the Old Testament prophets. He gave it to the Apostle Paul, and in Ephesians 3, verses 1, 2, and 3, Paul said regarding the church, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. If you read the rest of the chapter, the mystery is the church. Here we have a local church. A body of born-again baptized believers banded together for the purpose of world evangelization. There are 110,000 fundamentalist churches like this in the U.S. right now. Thousands of them all over the world. For 2,000 years, the body of Christ, the family of God, has met in local assemblies, local congregations. That mystery, that church, how can you know how you fit into that local church? Not everyone is a foot or a hand. We're all a part of a body. Are you supposed to be a Sunday school teacher, choir member, bus driver, bus captain, usher, witness, prayer warrior? So what are you supposed to be in the local church? Not a bench warmer. Uh, that's for sure. Every one of us is supposed to have a role. How can I know what God wants me to do? Revelation, God will show you what He wants you to do to exercise that gift. When I went off to Baptist Bible College, Springfield, Missouri in 1952, I'd just turned 19. I'd never taught a class or preached or anything, but I knew God was calling me to the ministry, so I went to the superintendent of the junior department, ages 9, 10, and 11, and I thought maybe I could teach a class of 11-year-old boys and fool them, make them think I knew something. Well, he looked me over and decided I wasn't wor worth much of a risk, so the superintendent gave me one boy and one roll book, and not a classroom around the assembly, but a little uh, curtain on a, on a wire that, that uh, sort of uh, selected off an area down front here. And I had one boy in one class, and I can tell you a lot of failures and a lot of lessons I learned in that, but after God taught me something, when that year ended, one year later, when school year was over, I had 56 11-year-old boys in that class. I had led most of them to Christ. I had led their brothers and sisters and friends to Christ and mothers and daddies. The junior department had doubled. The church had had a, a, an, an explosion of evangelism because God taught me how by revelation, by following his leading to do the little thing, and I believe if I had failed with that class or quit with that class, God would never allow me to pastor this church. And I want to tell you young men and young ladies out there, if you expect God to use you in the big things later, later, be faithful in the little things now. Find a place by revelation and get in and do it. Don't you go through four years of college and never teach a Sunday school class, lead a soul to Christ, drive a Sunday school church bus, knock on doors, become important to some poor little needy family out there. You get involved. And finally, Christian growth. Growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Philippians 3.15, I'll just read it. I'm 49 years old, and by God's grace, if he allows me to live 70, I'm 70% 70 along the way. That's simple arithmetic. And while the outward man perishes, the old body is going down. My wife can tell you that I'm not the same fellow she married 25 years ago. I can do anything now I could do then for 30 seconds, but she can tell you 
that uh, the, 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 with 25 years, it does make a difference. But though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. You can continue growing in grace spiritually when you're 100 years old. And that's what Philippians 3.15 says. Let us therefore as many as be perfect or mature be thus minded. And if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. You can keep growing, keep maturing, keep developing in your Christian life. No matter how old you are, this whole Christian life is supernatural. It's revelational. And as you look to him and depend on him, he will show you today what you need to know in every area of your life. Let's bow our heads in prayer. There in the seat where you are or by the television set, Christ died for you, was buried for you, rose from the dead for you. Just bow your head right now and pray this prayer with me and mean it from your heart. Oh God, I'm a sinner. I deserve to go to hell. But I believe Jesus died for me, was buried for me, rose from the dead for me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Save me from my sins. I want to serve you for the rest of my life as you give me strength. In Jesus' name, amen. While our heads are bowed, if you prayed that prayer at home, I want you to write me and ask for a free copy of the same booklet we'll give these who walk the aisles here at Thomas Road, How to Get Started Right. If you have questions, give me your phone number. We'll call you at our expense, J.O. Grooms and other soul winning pastors, and lead you to Christ on the phone. Prayer requests of any kind, needs, give them to me. We'll pray for you by name, by need. We'll write you personally. If you want counseling, there's a prayer hotline 24 hours a day. And if you're deaf, we have someone who will take your call on the TTY line free. Let us help you. Let us stand as we pray. Our Father and our God, help men and women and young people and children here and by a television set to believe the gospel and be born again today by revelation of the glorified Christ in whose name I ask this prayer, amen. While our heads are bowed, our pastors are here at the front to meet you. I'm going to ask you upstairs and down, whoever you are, whatever your need may be, if you raised your hand or didn't, to step out and come down and give your hand to one of these pastors, go to a private prayer room, and today make peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you need. If you want to join our church today, come. If you want to answer the call of God to the ministry, come. While we sing, will you come? Living on Revelations. People are walking down the aisles right now in the sanctuary just behind this wall, making decisions for Christ, Jesus Christ being revealed in them. And if God is speaking to your heart, you be sure to contact me and allow us to pray for you and to send you the same materials. We're sending those who are making professions of faith in Christ right now in our prayer rooms all around this little prayer room here. Something else I haven't mentioned to you, Dr. B.R. Lakin. The man that for 63 years has been preaching the gospel all over this world. My pastor, my dear friend who speaks every two or three months here on the Old Time Gospel Hour has been critically ill lately. That's why he has not been on the Old Time Gospel Hour and I hope you'll pray for him. And if you'd like to send him a get well card, a promise of your prayers, just write to Dr. B.R. Lakin, Box 2200, Titusville, Florida, and let him know you're praying for him. He's had some heart difficulties. He's very weak, unable to preach. He would appreciate a note from you. Now, how to live successfully. This is it right here. How to live successfully. I've been preaching for 30 years. I have never preached a series of messages from which I received more comments, more mail, than these messages from the 31 chapters of the book of Proverbs. I preached 31 sermons last year, 1982, and put those 31 sermons from the 31 chapters of the Proverbs on these cassette tapes right here. I've read every chapter, verse by verse. I've put inside those uh, messages how to live successfully, how to be a successful dad, mom, businessman, Christian, patriot, how to overcome difficulties, temptations. The most practical book in the Bible is the book of Proverbs. How to be a success in life. 
I've been a Christian for 31 years, and we have, we have duplicated and produced 31,000 sets of this cassette packet, How to Live Successfully. I'd like for you to have this cassette packet and the first 31,000 people who call the toll-free number on the screen right now and order this packet will receive it. Remember, if you were paying for it, you'd pay $75 or $80. I am asking if you can to send a tax-deductible contribution to the Old Time Gospel Hour, the Old Time Gospel Hour, in the amount of $50 or more if you can. You know there are many who will call us on the toll-free number who cannot afford to send anything or can't send the full $50. We don't turn people down for lack of money. So we need some who will give more, a tax-deductible contribution so that we can help 31,000 homes to get this library, 31 sermons on cassette tape, to learn how to live successfully. Will you do that right now? Last week, I asked you to write because last Sunday was Mother's Day, and I was afraid the telephone lines might be uh, loaded and uh, it would be uh, Im impossible for you to get through to us. But you can today call the toll-free number, 1-800-446-5000, and simply say, I want the Proverbs. That's this, how to live successfully. I want the Proverbs. And when you do that, I will ship them by UPS. You'll have them in the next three to five days at your door. And your $50 contribution to the Old Time Gospel Hour will help us keep this program on this station, sharing the saving gospel of Christ with your community, your area. I hope you'll do that right now. What you're going to do after you listen to these 31 sermons, and that will take you quite a while, after you've listened to these hours and hours of sermons from the book of Proverbs, all 31 chapters, what you will then do after riding in the car and listening or listening at home or whatever, you'll pass these Proverbs on to your friends, to people you know who are in need, family members. My guess is that this packet will pass all over your neighborhood, town, Sunday school, church, membership, whatever. And then you can put it on the library shelf there in your home or on the coffee table and keep it permanently. Let me send it to you today. 1-800-446-5000. Make a pledge. And you can pay $25 this month and $25 next month. That's up to you. We'll ship this to you right away. We'll then write you, and you can send back the full $50 or half of it and half next month. Any way you want to do that, that's fine. But remember, if you are late, if you are the 31,000 first person to call me, we're out. So call right now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Call right now, the toll-free number. We pay for the call. If you live in Hawaii, Alaska, or Canada, that number won't work. Write me, Jerry Falwell, Lynchburg, Virginia. Ask for the Proverbs. I think they will be a blessing to you. Thank you. Thank you for watching this Old Time Gospel Hour program. If you'd like to receive Dr. Falwell's messages from the Proverbs, please write to Jerry Falwell, Lynchburg, Virginia, 24514, and request the Proverbs series. Enclose a tax-deductible gift of $50 and make your check payable to the Old Time Gospel Hour. Immediately, we'll send you the eight cassette tapes in this attractive binder, which includes 31 sermons from the 31 chapters of the Proverbs. We know they will be a blessing to you. Once again, that address is Jerry Falwell, Lynchburg, Virginia, 24514. And now, a word from one of our sponsors. I'm Norma Hopkins from Holt, Michigan, and I'm a faith partner of the Old Time Gospel Hour. This has been a presentation of the Liberty Broadcasting System.